what is going on everyone welcome back to another swift tutorial today we're going to be taking a look at the view controller life cycle so something a little different than what we traditionally do where we build stuff i thought it would be pretty useful to go a little in depth with the various events uh, of a view controller initializing showing a view dismissing the view and then finally de-initializing so that said uh, let's not talk about theory and let's actually create a project and see each of these events in action. So we're going to create a simple single view application and let's just call this view controller lifecycle. And let's save this to our desktop and get right into it. So let's go to the viewcontroller.swift file. And we'll notice that by default, every view controller we create, we get this event called view did load uh, templated out for us. So it's stubbed out. You'll also notice we call it the super variant of the function, which essentially calls the function on the super class. And this view controller class inherits from UI view controller. So before we dive into each of these uh, steps of the lifecycle, Let's put in the other functions that we want to talk about. So we have view will appear, super, view will appear, pass an animated, view did appear, super, view did appear, animated, and conversely for the disappearing of the controller, view will disappear, super view will disappear animated and finally view view did disappear super view did disappear animated and we're also going to put in uh, d init in here so let's briefly discuss each of these and we're also going to look at the load view function and init so let me just put those here I'll comment them out to begin with so our app can actually run, but let's do load view, super load view, and init, and the one we want for the init is init with nib name uh, and bundle, so we can say super init nib name nil bundle nil. And let's see, it's complaining about this. So let's just comment this out. And let's say command B, everything should be compiling. Looks like we still have an error and it's because we're not actually overriding this. So let's comment this out as well. Now let's say command B and everything should be building. Okay, cool. So let's talk through each of these view lifecycle events. So view did load is, I would say, arguably the most important one. Uh, it gets called right after the view for the given controller has loaded, as the name implies. So generally, most controllers and most developers would want to set up things about their controller in this function. So that could include things like setting notification observers, uh, maybe dispatching a request to fetch data from the internet, configuring some colors, things like that. And that's also the reason that Xcode will automatically stub it out for you rather than stubbing out any of these uh, function overrides. So in this function, you might have seen even on this channel, we'll do something like set the background color. And if we hit Command R, of course, once we run it, we'll see that it's red. And what I'll also do, I guess, is uh, if we get a chance to create another controller, I might put print statements in here so we can see the order of execution of the functions. Uh, but anyways, moving on to the next function, view will appear, uh, of course, implies that after the view has loaded, aka in memory, the view is about to appear. Uh, this means that it's not visible yet to the user, so it's the split second in between when it's loaded in memory, but not visible to the user yet. So in view will appear, oftentimes uh, we want to do things like uh, also fetch data from the internet. 
We might want to set up some values for uh, cached resources, databases. We might want to trigger a vibration to the device, some type of user feedback, things like that. Um, if I'm being honest, I don't personally use view will appear too, too much. It's not as common. Uh, the more common of the, the view functions of appearing is view did appear. And as the name implies, this gets called uh, right after view will appear. So the view has loaded at this point and view did load and it has appeared to the user. And the reason this is interesting is now you can call layout functions on the view. And you can do that now because the view is loaded and on screen. So it's a part of the view hierarchy for the controller. So in view did appear, uh, we can do like add sub views. Um, we can also, for example, if we dispatch a request to get data from the internet via an API call, we can show a spinner. Um, the other thing we can do is uh, potentially, for example, if our app uses Face ID to lock and unlock the user uh, experience, uh, we can prompt password. So things like that, view did appear are really good for. The other thing that view did appear is a really good function for is analytics. So you can imagine if you want to capture analytics, uh, regardless of what platform you're using to do it, Google, Facebook, etc. Sometimes people would want to put analytic calls in view did load. So now what's the problem with that? So for example, if you have a tab bar app and you have a controller for a tab, view did load only gets called one time because the loaded controller or the loaded view stays in memory. So let's say you want to capture an analytics event every time you go back to that screen or that controller. Instead of view did load getting called again, the view did appear function will get called again. So it's important to know that loading is very specific to memory and the appearance hooks that you see here are very specific to the behavior of something appearing and disappearing. So that said, moving on, view will disappear. Uh, these two are basically converse to the ones up here, as I'm sure you've noticed, and they're, all these functions are ordered. So sometimes in view will disappear. Maybe we want to dismiss a spinner view that we have on screen. Uh, do some cleanup of the UI. Uh, in view did disappear, maybe we want to do further cleanup. Uh, for cases of, let's say, uh, the user has entered some information, like on Instagram or Facebook, if you're halfway in the middle of a post, maybe you want to show the user an alert and say, hey, do you want to save your contents as a draft? Things like that. Uh, and finally, dinit, which is the opposite of initializing. In here, you want to clean up any memory or things like that. You want to nil out your variables. Uh, so for example, this is pretty commonly used to remove notification observers. So in here, you'll often see things along the lines of remove observer self. So any observers that have been added to this class before you deinitialize and remove this controller from memory, we want to get rid of the observers. So that's a very quick rundown of these functions. Um, the other one which I want to discuss, which I think is pretty interesting, is overriding load view. So I'm sure you've noticed, rather let's look at it. So when we just run this app, we have a standard UI view, which is this view controller's view, and it's red. And if you've ever used a UI table view controller, you'll know that in a table view controller, the default view is a table view. So how does Apple do that under the hood? So all Apple is doing under the hood is overriding this load view function. And as you can kind of probably guess, this gets called before view did load. And in here, we can actually assign the view to be whatever the heck we want it to be. So for example, if we have a table view and it's a UI table view, table view, we can say view is the table view. And if we run this, you'll see that the red view that we get here is a table view now. And it's a little hard to see, but there's lines that separate these cells. So it is in fact a table view. And just so you guys can visualize it more, let's, uh, let's do some basic table view setup. So in here, what I like to do is I'll say something along the lines of the data source itself. Let's also 
register a standard table view cell. And this should be for cell reuse identifier, cell. So in other words, you can do a lot of the view setup in load view. Now, of course, you can do it in view to load also. I like to do it in load view just because it keeps all the view logic in this loading function. And um, let's bring in our uh, table view data source functions. So number of rows, let's return 10, cell for row. And if you're not familiar with table views, uh, I've got tons of videos on it. So take a look at those. And I don't want to get too much into the weeds since it's not really the point of this video. And uh, let's see, this should be cell for row. So this function is not correct. Let's get rid of this. We want to sell for row at index path. Whoops. Let's return the cell. Let's set the cells text label. So this variable should be an index path. Cell dot text label dot text equals test. Hit command R to build and run. And you'll see that we get our cells here. So something that's important and interesting to note is traditionally, if you create any UI element, you have to do something along the lines of uh, view, add sub view, table view. So you'll notice we didn't actually do that here. Uh, we can simply run it and we have our table view on screen and it's properly sized for the whole screen as well. Uh, it also respects the safe areas, which is the notch up here and the little safe area down here. So how does it do that? The way that the table knows to fit the entirety of the screen is in load view, we've told the controller that the controller's root view uh, right here is this table view. So the controller under the hood will assign all of this for us. Uh, hence why a UI table view doesn't just add a sub view, it under the hood just overrides this. Now you can imagine if you have your own custom UI view subclass, where you have a really nice looking UI, instead of adding it as a sub view, you might just want to update this load view function, override it, and assign the controller's view. So that's what this uh, load view goodness is about here. The last thing we'll look at is a custom initializer. So for if we, for example, had another class, and let's say it was a class called other, view controller and a subclass of view controller we can create this by saying view controller with parentheses now what if we wanted to pass in and this warning is saying we just haven't used the variable but what if we wanted to pass in custom parameters so to do that we would want to override the initializer and this is similar to lifecycle hooks for the controller uh, the difference being init, init is called at the very beginning of any object, including a controller, then load view, and then these view uh, lifecycle events in the order you see here. And once you're done using the controller, dinit is called. So let's go to this new controller and add init. So if we start typing init, you'll see we get some options here. And the one that we want to create our custom initializer is we can just say init. And let's say we have a controller that shows someone's name. We can say init with name string. And we need to make sure we call a super um, initializer with a bundle name and a niv name of nil. And I believe this error should now go away. And the reason it's not going away, whoops, let's close my uh, antivirus pop-up. The reason it's not going away is if you click on the error, we also need to bring in this. So if you hit fix, it'll stub out this required uh, other initializer. And now if you hit command B, let's see what we have going on down here. You'll see that this doesn't work anymore. And the reason this doesn't work anymore is because we just overrid the initializer. And the one we want to initialize this with is with name. So you'll notice this initializer up here 
is init with name. So we're gonna say, let's say John. And you might be asking, what the heck is the point of this? Uh, the point is, if your controller needs some minimum properties, for example, let's say you have a name on here, which is a let, it needs to get initialized uh, in the initializer. So we're gonna say in here, and you'll actually see actually before I fill it in, there's an error here and it's basically saying that not all properties in this class have been initialized yet. So what we can say here now is self.name equals name, where this name is our current class's property, so self.name, and this name is a parameter that's coming into the initializer. And uh, we can actually hit command B and you'll see the error goes away. We still have a warning down here because we're not making use of this VC variable. Uh, but the point is you can customize the initializer and it's oftentimes a really good idea if you know the controller has some minimum property requirements. Uh, for example, if a controller needs to have uh, a string set or a Boolean set or a closure set, you can do it in a non-optional way through the initializer uh, so that once your view did load is ready to be called, you have all your properties available. So for example, in view did load, if we wanted to set uh, or make a API call, we can do view did load, call super, and we can just print out our name and use it because we know it's a requirement, it's non-optional, and it's available. And that's about it for view controller life cycles. Um, I know this video is a little all over the place. Uh, it's a little bit of an abstract topic to cover, uh, and I didn't plan on doing this today, so Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys have a good understanding of this now. The other thing I'll mention, and I guess it was a bit of an assumption on my part that this was understood, is all of these classes are subclassing a UI view controller. And if we command click into it, you'll see that this is the controller that Apple has built and added into the SDK. And the notion is that we're inheriting from it. So the reason all of these functions have the keyword override for it with the exception of the uh, initializer up here, is because uh, all of these all of these view did load and view functions have default implementations, and we want to override them, which is why we type in override, and which is also why we call super dot that function name at the very beginning of these functions. Uh, this is basically just saying on the super class call the function. And that just runs the default implementation. And then we do all of our own custom stuff right below it. So that's basically a very quick overview and overlook of the view controller lifecycle. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for you all. If you haven't hit that like button yet, make sure you absolutely smash it for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out the video and larger channel quite a bit. If you're new to the channel and enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe. Comment down below if you have any questions. I try to reply to every single comment. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. I love the community that we're building around this channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.